modified zine Nielsen staining. Acid fast or tubercle bacilli have a compound in their cell walls called mycolic acid which makes them difficult to stain with usual staining methods. They require strong dyes and a prolonged staining time to facilitate the entry of stains through their cell walls. But once stained, they resist decolorization. Bacteria, which cause tuberculosis and leprosy, are grouped under the genus Mycobacterium and belong to the category of acid-fast bacilli. Acid-fast bacilli stain pink against a blue background. Sample collection. Microscopic examination of sputum is an important method by which the diagnosis of pulmonary tuberculosis can be confirmed. Whenever tuberculosis is suspected, at least three specimens of sputum should be collected over two consecutive days and examined by microscopy. Only one laboratory form needs to be filled for all the three specimens of the patient. Guidelines for collecting sputum for smear microscopy. First visit to the microscopy center. When a TB suspect reports to the laboratory, a deeply cuffed specimen is collected on the spot. This specimen is called a spot specimen. The patient is then given a similarly marked empty sputum container to collect a specimen early next morning and bring it to the laboratory. This specimen is called an early morning specimen. Second visit to the microscopy center. The early morning specimen brought by the patient is received and a further spot specimen is collected. Thus, there will be three samples, spot, early morning and spot. Obtaining a good sputum specimen is crucial for quality sputum microscopy. If the first spot specimen is positive by microscopy and the patient does not return for the second sputum test, an immediate search must be made to find the patient to prevent dissemination of infection in the community. In the interest of the patient, second and third specimens of sputum must be collected and examined. To facilitate this, it is important to note down the complete address of all symptomatic patients. Smear preparation, staining and reading. All specimens should be examined in the nearest designated microscopy center as a rule by the Seal Nielsen method. Seal Nielsen staining procedure. Smear preparation is similar to that of gram stain. Here, the patient sample is sputum and in cases where TB other than pulmonary TB is suspected, samples such as pus, tissue, bone, etc. can also be taken. For sputum samples, smear is made from yellow purulent portion of the sputum using a broomstick or a sterilized nichrome wire loop. A good smear is spread evenly and is neither too thick nor too thin. Smear preparation should be done near a flame. This is required as 6 inches around the flame is considered as a sterile zone which coagulates the aerosol raised during smear preparation. Air dry and heat fix the smear. Requirements Concentrated carbol fusion 25% sulfuric acid 0.1% methylene blue Staining rack or rods Staining method Place a slide smear upwards on the staining rack over a sink. 1% filtered carbol fusion is poured to cover the entire surface of the slide. Prepare the torch by dipping its cotton wool end in burning spirit and light it. Or simply use a spirit lamp. Heat the slide, keeping the lamp a little below the slide and moving it continuously back and forth along the line until steam rises. This is repeated twice at intervals of 3 to 5 minutes. Do not allow the staining solution to dry on the slides. Add fresh solution as required. Contact time of the staining solution with the smear should total at least 10 minutes. Rinse the slide well in a gentle stream of tap water. At this point, the smear on the slide looks red in color. Decolorize with 25% sulfuric acid or acid alcohol 
and allow it to stand for 2 to 4 minutes. Rinse the slide well in a gentle stream of tap water. Counter stain with 0.1% methylene blue and let it stand for 1 minute. Rinse the slide well in a gentle stream of tap water. Put the slide on edge on the drying rack and allow to air dry. Note, the stain smear should show a light blue color. A dark blue color usually indicates that the smear is too thick or that the methylene blue staining time was too long. This will hide the red acid fast bacilli in the background. Do not blot dry the slides. Use new slides each time. Microscopy and reporting. The slide is examined under 100x lens of the microscope using a drop of immersion oil. Scan the stained smear systematically from left to right and then again from the right to the left in a zigzag fashion. Examine a minimum of 300 fields before reporting a smear negative. Acid fast bacilli appear bright red against the background material counter stained in blue. Report as positive for AFB when the background is bluish and at least one red AFB is seen in a well destained smear. They can occur singly or in small groups and rarely in large clumps. Results must be reported in a special register of tuberculosis laboratory examination and the laboratory form. Use red ink for positive results. Reports must be provided as soon as possible. For a negative result, report acid fast bacilli were not seen. For a positive result, report quantification, that is, the number of AFB seen. It should not be assumed that all AFB are tubercle bacilli. Sputum spears are examined and interpreted as indicated in this table. All positive and negative slides should be stored serially in the same slide box until instructed by the supervisor. Quality control. A smear from a known positive sample should always be stained along with each batch of slides stained. Common errors while performing Zeal Nielsen staining. Wrong labeling. Too thin or thick smear. Inadequate fixing. Stain deposits. Over decolorization.